Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will actually continue with the basic properties of symmetric groups. So, in the last lecture, we saw that uh, given any permutation can be written as product of disjoint cycles. So, now we will use that result and then prove that any permutation can be written as product of uh, transpositions. So, not necessarily distinct transpositions. So, let, let me just state the result. Okay, here is the theorem. So, this is somewhat uh, very important uh, result in order to understand uh, given permutation. So, you take any permutation sigma in S n. Okay. So, it is a product of transpositions. So, they they are not necessarily distinct. Okay. Disjoint. So, note that if they are actually uh, necessarily disjoint then what will happen if you write sigma as product of uh, transpositions which are necessarily disjoint. So, then uh, that sigma must be involution that means it must have order 2. Okay. But here we are talking about uh, any given permutation. So, now uh, let us see how one can prove that. So, this is just a corollary of what we have proved uh, earlier. So, given permutation you can write it as product of disjoint cycles. Okay. Now, if you are able to write given a cycle as a product of uh, uh, transpositions then we are done. So, we will do that. So, you start with the trans uh, cycle let us call it a 1 etcetera a k. So, cycle of length k. So, then uh, we what we want to do we want to write this as product of actually uh, transpositions. So, let us do one example then it will become actually very clear what we are talking about. So, let us take this cycle 1 3 5 inside uh, S 5. So, then you can see that if you actually arrange it. So, first you take 1 5 and then take 1 3. If you take the product of these two then you get 1 3 5. So, let us see how it is done. So, what is 1 5? So, let us write it in, in terms of uh, our permutation notation. So, this is 1 2 3 4 5. So, 1 5 is just permutes uh, 1 and 5. So, 1 goes to 5, 5 goes to 1 all other elements are fixed. And then you can see that 1 goes to 3 and then 3 goes to 1 all other elements are fixed. So, now if you take for example, 2 which is not from this support of 1 3 5, you can see that this 2 and 4. So, they are fixed by both both of these uh, permutations. So, in particularly 2 and 4 they are fixed in this product, Okay, no issue. So, now if you take for example, uh, 1 then what will happen? So, 1 goes to 3 and then 3 goes to 3. So, that means, so in this in the product you can see that, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 2 goes to 2, 4 goes to 4 and 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3. So, 1 goes to 3. Now, what is about 3? So, 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 5. So, 3 goes to 5 and then 5 must go to 1, there is no other option. So, which is same as 1 goes to 3. So, let me write it here 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 5 and then 5 goes to 1 which is this cycle 1 3 5. Okay. So, this is what we need to very, uh, generalize. So, this actually tells us what pattern it should be. So, you take the first element pair it with the last element and then you keep the first element and then pair it with the second last and so on. So, then you will be able to get this cycle. So, indeed you can write this as a 1 a k and then a 1 a k minus 1 and so on. So, then a 1 
a3 and a1 a2 so the product of these transpositions will be exactly equal to this cycle a1 etc ak for example let's see where this uh, image a1 so the image a1 here on the left side should be a a2 so a1 goes to a2 on the left hand side so now look at the image on the right hand side on the right hand side a1 goes to a2 here but a2 is fixed here a2 is fixed here in all these transpositions so that means a1 actually goes to a2 on the right hand side as well similarly you can look at what happens to a2 a2 goes to a1 but a1 here goes to a3 but a3 will will be fixed in the next uh, transposition so that you can see that so a2 goes to a1 and a1 goes to a3 so that means a2 goes to a3 on the right hand side which is the case here a2 goes to a3 here okay similarly all other uh, indices you can check what is happening for example if you take ak so ak is fixed in all this k minus 1 transpositions so only ak will have effect from the first transposition so which actually sends ak to a1 so that is the case here ak goes to a1 here so that means the product of these transpositions is exactly equal to this given k cycle so now if you start with any permutation that can be written as product of disjoint cycles so now each cycle can be written as product of transposition but but note that they are not necessarily disjoint okay because this a1 be there in common to all of them okay so in particularly uh, given permutation can be written as product of transpositions okay so now uh, here is somewhat uh, special transpositions okay so transpositions they are also very important okay transpositions look like this ij okay where i and j both comes from so one can actually uh, rewrite ij is same as ji so you can see that one can index this transposition as follows so where uh, you write ij where i and j satisfies they come from 1 to n such that i less than j so this is exactly the upper uh, like strictly upper triangular part of the matrix okay if you want to look at in terms of the matrices so the diagonal will be here which is ii so if you take all these entries on the top so that corresponds to exactly these transpositions so now how many are there it is just exactly 1 plus 2 plus etc n minus 1 so this is exactly n into n minus 1 by 2 so these many transpositions are there in sn okay the number of transpositions in sn is equal to n into n minus 1 by 2 so now uh, if you think about okay so what we what this theorem says as a group sn is generated by transpositions okay and uh, if you actually look at how many transpositions are there it is almost like n square okay so this is exactly like uh, n square uh, amount of transposition that are there but that seems to be really lot for for the group sn okay so then we can ask is there any smaller set of generators okay so one can actually prove that so there is there is this special set of transposition called adjacent transpositions or simple transpositions okay so i would actually like to call them simple transposition so that also will generate uh, the group sn so what is this so the simple transpositions or the adjacent transpositions they are the transposition of the form i i plus 1 so basically you just switch only the ith index and i plus 1th index so that is this transposition does okay so this is 
a simple transposition corresponding to i. Of course, this can vary only from i to n minus 1. Okay, there are n minus 1 simple transposition. So, the climb is actually again uh, this the group S n is generated by these simple transpositions i i plus 1. Okay. So, how one can prove this? So, we already know that uh, symmetric group is generated by all transpositions. So, it is enough to actually uh, prove that given a transposition is actually product of this simple transposition. Okay. So, that is again uh, somewhat easy. So, any given transposition looks like something like this. So, k l where k is less than l. So, this is how given transposition looks like. So, then one can check that this is exactly equal to the product of these simple transposition. You can take k k plus 1 and then k plus 1 k plus 2 and then you go all the way up to l minus 1 l and then what you need to do? You need to actually take the inverse of this conjugate with that. So, that is exactly equal to so l minus 2 l minus 1 okay, l minus 2 l minus 1 and then product up to k k plus 1. Okay. So, this is what uh, you need to take. So, if you take all these products, okay, then you can see that. So, this is going to be exactly equal to k l. Okay. So, let us do some example and then and then uh, it, it will be like you can convince yourself that uh, this is the case. Let us take S 4 and then do this 1 uh, and then uh, let us say 4. So, then what it what this actually says this is exactly 1 2 2 3 3 4 okay. and then you have to take now okay, the L minus 2 is 2 and then 3 and then you go like one step down 1 and 2. Okay. So, the product of this is exactly 1 4. So, let us check this is the case. So, left hand side we understand very well there is no issue what is about the right hand side. So, look at uh, what happens to 1. So, 1 goes to 2 here, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, but 4 is fixed in this. So, that means if you write this as 1 to 4, so 1 goes to 4. Now, look at 2, 2 goes to 1 okay, here and then uh, 2 goes to 3 and then 3 goes to 4. Sorry, we wanted to look at 2 goes to 1. Yeah. So, what happens to 2? 2 goes to 1, 1 is fixed here, fixed here and fixed here and at the end 1 goes to 2. So, 2 goes to 2. Similarly, what is about 3? So, 3 is fixed here, but 3 goes to 2 here and then 2 is fixed here and then 2 goes to 3 here and then 3 is fixed. That means, 3 goes to 3. Similarly, you can see that 4 is fixed here, 4 is fixed here, 4 goes to 3, but 3 goes to 2 here and then 2 goes to 1. So, 4 goes to 1. So, that means, this is exactly the cycle 1, 4. Okay. And this is what happening here in this product as well. Okay. Let me just uh, show by example. Let us see where k goes to. So, k here you can see that k goes to k plus 1. In the next term k plus 1 goes to k plus 2 and so on. So, then it will go to l minus 1 and then l minus goes to l and l is fixed in all of them. So, that means k goes to l here. Similarly, if you take k plus 1, k plus 1 goes to k, but k is fixed in everything except the last one where k goes to k plus 1. So, that means k plus 1 goes to k plus 1. Similarly, if you go to k plus 2, k plus 2 here what will be the term? This k plus 3 k plus 2. So, k plus 2 goes to k plus 3. It is fixed everywhere except in this term where k plus 
2 goes to k plus 3 ok. So, likewise you can convince yourself that all elements are mapped itself except L because L is fixed in all these except here L goes to L minus 1. If you come down all the way this L minus 1 goes to L minus 2 and so on then finally that goes to k plus 1 which goes to k. So, then that cycle is complete, completed it gives you transposition k L. So, this is a simple formula that you can work it out by doing some examples. So, once the formula is given you can easily see that this formula indeed works ok. So, this prove that proves that this S n is indeed generated by this simple transpositions i i plus 1 there are n minus 1 transposition. So, there are again uh, some more uh, generating sets smaller than this ok. So, maybe I will actually add it in the assignments. So, but these uh, set of generators they are somewhat important uh, from the reflection group point of view ok. So, as I said this S n has this uh, another way of realizing ok. So, that is using this permutation of identity matrix ok. So, then this I i plus 1 is indeed uh, corresponds to switching this i throw and i plus 1 throw or j throw j th column sorry i th column and i plus 1 th column. So, whichever uh, rows or column that you are actually permuting depending upon that it will just switch. So, we will actually uh, give that uh, reflection group interpretation later once I introduce uh, the isometries and reflection groups and so on. Okay, so, let us move on uh, as we actually notice before if you are interested in uh, finding out whether given a permutation is actually having sign 1 or minus 1 ok. So, we need to look at its cyclic decomposition and then see what happens. So, now we can also use this uh, uh, product of transposition and then see what happens. So, note that the cyclic decomposition is unique ok because we are writing in terms of uh, product of disjoint cycles, but this uh, writing uh, product of transposition it is not something unique ok. One can write it in many different ways, but anyway what is the advantage of writing it as product of uh, transposition? If you write sigma as some product of let us say transposition tau 1 etcetera tau r then you can see that the sign of sigma is going to be exactly minus 1 power r where r is the number of transposition that are actually used here in this product ok. Why this is the case because if you take for example, the simple transposition ok you can see that the sign of the simple transposition i i plus 1 is going to be just minus 1 because just changes that i throw and i plus 1 throw. So, what is about the sign of the transposition i j? So, that is also going to be minus 1 because it changes the i throw and j th row ok. But if you just work it out using this decomposition ok you can see that. So, exactly the same result that you get because the sign is well defined group homomorphism from S n to plus or minus 1. So, from that one can actually realize that if you write ok for example ok here is a result which is immediate once we know that the sign map is actually well defined group homomorphism from the symmetric group to plus or minus. If you write identity as product of some transpositions, product of some transpositions. So, then this r must be congruent to 0 modulo 2. Why? Proof is simple you just apply the sign map on both side the sign of 
identity is 1. So, that means this minus 1 power r must be 1. So, that will imply that r is congruent to 0 modulo 2. Okay. So, this indeed says it does not matter okay, even though the product of transposition if you write it uh, sigma as product of trans transposition that expression may not be unique. But still one can conclude that the number of transposition that is used in the expression that must be either odd or even okay, that is what this simple observation tells. Okay. If you write sigma as product of this uh, transpositions, you write sigma as some tau 1 etcetera tau r and then some sigma 1 etcetera sigma s where tau i and sigma j they are all transpositions. So, then we can conclude that this r must be congruent to s modulo 2 either both r and s are even or they are odd. Okay. They we, we cannot have mixed sign. So, in particularly we can have this following characterization if sigma is in a n if and only if sigma can be written as can be written as a product of even number of transpositions. So, this is one of the characterization of sigma being element of this A. Okay. So, such uh, sigma we call it even permutation because the number of transpositions that are used to write sigma as product of uh, those transpositions. So, that is always even. Okay. So, it does not matter which uh, way we write still the number of transpositions that will be used or will be always even. So, such transposition we call it even transposition. So, then sigma in a n are called even permutations and obviously all other permutations are called odd permutations. Okay. So, in particularly s n can be written as a n union a coset of a n. Okay. A n will have all even permutation that coset will have all odd permutations. Okay. So, now uh, let us try to understand uh, something about the conjugacy of elements of S n. Okay. So, here is the important proportion. So, now using this proportion we can actually determine when two elements of uh, S n are conjugate. So, what is this proportion? This proportion uh, now it actually tells about uh, so what can be conjugate of uh, some given cycle. Okay. So, note that if you are interested in understanding conjugacy of uh, some given sigma, so write take sigma from S n. Okay. So, we know that sigma can be written as product of disjoint cycle, write sigma as some sigma 1 etcetera sigma of r. So, this is the cyclic decomposition of sigma let us say. So, then let us say we are interested in some particular conjugate of sigma let us call it tau sigma tau inverse. Then you can see that this tau sigma tau, tau inverse can be rewritten as follows. So, this is going to be just product of tau sigma 1 tau inverse times tau sigma 2 tau inverse times etcetera times tau sigma r tau inverse. So, by multiplying and uh, multiplying by tau and tau, tau inverse in between you can actually cancel them together and then see that this expression on the left side is exactly equal to tau sigma 1 etcetera sigma r tau inverse which is exactly equal to tau sigma tau inverse. So, now it says that if you want to understand tau sigma tau inverse it is enough to understand what is this tau sigma 1 tau in tau inverse. Okay. So, indeed that is what we are going to do now. So, we start with some cycle and then see how it is conjugacy conjugate of that uh, cycle looks like. So, take sigma which is a 1 etcetera a k 
and this tau inside S n. So, now we can easily see that if you compute this tau sigma tau inverse then it exactly look like another k cycle which is given by tau of a 1 etcetera tau of a k. So, very explicitly if you take uh, the conjugate of the sigma by tau then this can be written very explicitly as the cycle k cycle tau of a 1 etcetera tau of a k. So, now once we once we know this proportion then it is not hard to state a characterization for conjugacy of elements of S n. So, let, let me just write it down ok. Before that we need to write down what is called this cycle type ok. Yes, cycle type of sigma of S n ok. So, what is the cycle type? So, you write sigma as some product of disjoint cycle ok. This is the cyclic decomposition and we know that this cyclic decomposition is unique it is completely determined by sigma. So, in particularly if you take this length of sigma 1. So, since all this sigma is they all permute ok sorry they, they all actually uh, can be rearranged because they all commute with mutually commute with each other. So, you can rearrange them such a way that the length of sigma n sigma 1 is less than or equal to length of sigma 2 less than or equal to etcetera less than or equal to length of sigma 4. So, you rearrange them so that the length of the cycles increases. So, then you call the cycle type of sigma to be this numbers the ordered numbers length of sigma 1 etcetera length of sigma 4 ok. So, this is called the cycle type of sigma. So, you fix this cyclic decomposition such that the length increases length of each cycle increases then the cycle type of uh, sigma is defined to be this uh, length of sigma 1 etcetera length of So, note that this is uniquely assigned data to given sigma ok that means it is well defined. So, now you call two elements of uh, S n having same cycle type if the cycle type of sigma is same as cycle type of tau ok. So, we say sigma and tau from S n have same cycle type if the cycle type of sigma is same as the cycle type of tau. So, what is the meaning of this? That means, you write sigma as product of disjoint cycles ok. The number of 1 cycles appear in sigma that must be same as number of 1 cycles that appear in tau. Similarly, the number of 2 cycles that appear in sigma must be same as the number of 2 cycles appear in tau and so on ok. Sometimes people use this one shorthand notation. So, they group them together ok the number of ones that appears and so on then they write this same as 1 power m 1, 2 power m 2 and so on some k power m k where m i denotes the number of cycles number of k cycles sorry i cycles appear in sigma ok. So, this notation is also somewhat suggestive ok because uh, the similar notation used for partition of uh, this uh, m 1 plus etcetera m k ok. So, we will see later that uh, why that uh, partition actually comes. So, it is important to note that uh, because these the length of the cycles corresponds to the orbits length of the orbits. So, it is very clear it is clear that if you add all of them ok because we have included even trivial cycle that is cycle having length 1. So, if you add all of them you can see that you will get exactly the, the n which is the 1 to n 
the cardinality of 1 to n ok. So, that means so, this is exactly a partition of, so this is exactly a partition of m, ok. So, now uh, what we want to say like uh, once you have defined this cycle type, ok. So, this proportion now can be rewritten as follows, ok. If you take a cycle, k cycle, and then if you conjugate by some tau in S n then you get again k cycle. So, that means the cycle types does not change when you when you do this conjugation for the cycles and that is exactly going to be true for any sigma because if you start with sigma if you write it as product of this uh, disjoint cycles if you take the conjugate by tau then you can see that the cycle type of this tau sigma tau inverse is going to be exactly the cycle type of sigma because of this. Now, conversely we can prove that. So, if you have two uh, permutations sigma and tau having same cycle type, so then we can prove that they must be conjugate ok. So, here is the theorem. So, what is the theorem says? So, it gives you characterization for conjugacy in terms of the cycle types. So, two elements of S n are conjugate or they are in the same conjugacy class if and only if they have the same cycle type ok. So, two elements of S n they are conjugate if and only if they have same cycle type. So, one way is proved using this proportion and uh, we will also uh, prove the converse ok. So, we need to first of all verify uh, why this is true. So, then actually we will be done with the proportion. Now, what will be the immediate corollary? The immediate corollary will be so, the number of conjugacy classes ok, the number of conjugacy classes in S n is going to be exactly equal to the number of cycle types that we get which is going to be exactly the number of partitions of n. So, the number of partitions of n is exactly equal to the number of conjugacy classes in S n and uh, one knows lot about uh, this partition functions ok and of course, computing them for uh, smaller values are somewhat easy, but, uh, but one can see that as n grows then this uh, number of partitions of n, uh, n also grows exponentially large ok. So, computing this for large n will be very, very difficult ok. I will uh, stop here, uh, we will actually continue with the proof of this uh, in the next class ok. So, this corollary is immediate from the theorem ok, I will stop here.